Approximately eight months ago, I made a video about vacuum diffusion pumps, or my vacuum diffusion pump. It was an oil-based vacuum diffusion pump. This one you see right here is a mercury diffusion pump. If you're interested in how these pumps work, they are fascinating. They work without any moving parts at all. Um, you can watch my video, I made it about one year ago, where I explain the working principle of this type of pump in detail. I'm definitely not man enough to let this pump run in my home, but some of you wanted to see a mercury diffusion pump in action, and since I got one from the same person that uh, gave me his Schlenk setup, I thought it would be a shame to never use it. So today I've set up everything that is needed, and you and me for the first time can see this pump run. Let's talk about everything that is set up on the table right now. First of all, we have the main diffusion pump on the right side. And as you can see, it has the mercury metal at the bottom here. And in operation, this mercury metal gets heated by a heating coil, which you can see right here. It evaporates, travels up this tube right here, which is insulated and down this column right here. And there are basically four connections at this diffusion pump. Two of them are for the cooling water, which is the one on top here and at the bottom here. And the cooling water is flowing through this outer jacket here and cools the mercury vapor, which is condensing. Just as a quick reminder, the mercury vapor basically transfers its impulse to the gas particles in the vacuum and they are carried down towards this uh, area right here and this port right here is connected to the roughing pump via a cold trap which is in this doer right here. It's not the big one uh, in the back here but just a small glass tube in a u-shape. This cold trap is meant to condense any mercury vapor which might get to this cold trap and then the cold trap is connected to the roughing pump and the roughing pump also has a vacuum gauge connected to measure the pressure. The large port is the high vacuum port. Basically, if you're looking for the high vacuum port on a system like this or something similar, it's most likely the larger opening. And this is connected also to a cold trap. As you can see, the cold trap is connected via a hose and also via a pretty small diameter connector here, which is basically nonsense. Small diameter tubing and also rubber ruins your high vacuum. It's only done because I didn't want to bring the cold trap with the NS29 glass ground joint. It is quite large and setting it up uh, risks damaging it. And basically I would have to use a hose anyway to connect the high vacuum gauge here. So I think it's good enough to demonstrate uh, that this pump will lower the pressure even further. This cold trap here is very important. Without it, your vacuum would be limited by the vapor pressure of mercury at room temperature, basically, or the temperature of the cooling water. This cold trap basically eliminates uh, the vapor pressure of mercury because everything condenses in here. And at the other side, your high vacuum system, whatever you want to use, is connected. In my case, I have my Infigon BPG402 uh, connected, which is a high vacuum gauge and it will measure the pressure at this point here um, when we run the pump. Both vacuum gauges are connected to this guy right here. It is my new project. It is a vacuum gauge controller and this is just a small teaser. There will be a separate video about it and yeah, I think it's very cool. It will be an open source project and I think it will be great for the community to work on it together and use it for the readout of vacuum gauges. As a little additional teaser, this is the readout from my new vacuum gauge controller, um, but more on that in an upcoming video. Before we can turn on the diffusion pump, we have to turn on the roughing pump to pump the system down. The diffusion pump would basically not work uh, at atmospheric pressure. So the system is almost pumped down through the roughing vacuum, which means we can fill this doer with liquid nitrogen. To fill this doer with liquid nitrogen, we are going to use its bigger brother. After adding the liquid nitrogen, the pressure dropped and right now we've hit a steady state, so the pressure is not falling or rising. And now we can turn on the mercury diffusion pump, heat the mercury and we will watch the pressure and we should be able to see the pressure at this point right here, which is the second gauge drop, and the pressure at this gauge, the roughing gauge, rise, because we are basically compressing air, the air molecules, from the high vacuum side here 
down to the roughing site down here and we should be able to see this pressure gradient at the graphs of the pressure gauges. Shortly after turning on the heating element you can already see that the mercury is boiling and condensing on the top side of this uh, flask right here. The mercury down here has been boiling for a few minutes now and it seems like um, this tube here has heated up because you can see the first droplets of mercury condensing on top here and dripping down back into the flask. In the bottom right corner you can see the graphs of the vacuum sensors. The left graph belongs to the roughing pump and the right one to the high vacuum sensor. You can see very nicely the effect I was talking about earlier. As the gas molecules are transported by the pump from the high vacuum area to the rough vacuum area, the pressure in the vacuum system drops and rises at the backing pump. Okay, as you see, it's gotten dark here, but we've put up some lights. And right now, we've reached a pressure at the high vacuum side of 7.4 times 10 to the power of minus 4 millibar. That's not quite two orders of magnitude uh, lower than the rough vacuum side. I think the main culprit are those hoses and the small diameter tubing at the high vacuum side. As I've explained before, that's not a good practice on a high vacuum system because on the one hand the polymer is permeable for different gases and also outgases itself and the small diameter um, slows down the molecular flow. The molecular flow through a large opening of course is much faster than through a small one. And I thought before we disassemble everything here I would like to explain to you on this example here. This is a mercury diffusion pump without any mercury in it how this type of pump works. We basically have mercury at the bottom in this flask here and we are heating the mercury. It boils, travels up this long tube on the side which is insulated and travels down here. As you can see the high vacuum side is connected at this large flange on the top here and here you can see a funnel and the mercury travels in this inside tube exits through these small openings inside the funnel and is redirected downwards and all the gas molecules in the vacuum that are still in here basically get carried by the mercury vapor downwards. The mercury vapor transfers its impulse to the gas molecules and they are sort of compressed down here where they can be carried out and evacuated by the roughing pump and are excluded from the high vacuum site on top here. That's basically um, how this type of pump, it doesn't matter if it's a oil diffusion pump or a mercury diffusion pump, they work on the same principle. As I've said before, I've made a video on the topic and how these pumps work. Okay, we are currently at 7.33 times 10 to the power of minus 4 millibars. Um, I think we could get lower with the appropriate connections. Maybe in the future, when I set up the Schlenk setup permanently, I will show it to you. But I think this demonstration was good enough to show you a mercury diffusion pump in action. And other than that, thank you a lot for watching. Very interesting to see. We've turned off the heater of the mercury diffusion pump. And as you can see, the pressure after about, I don't know, five minutes is sharply rising as no air or no molecules are excluded from the high vacuum side which means that the pressure on the high vacuum side will uh, reach an equilibrium with the pressure on the roughing side.